Show sponsored by Anarchy, Rage, and Spit, and only at the Zone.fm. Hey guys, I'm Jen Warnock for Absolute Underground. We are outside Sopranos. Sports bar, and I have with me two of the members from Little Guitar Army. How are you guys doing? Very well, fantastic. It's, it's, it's nice here yeah, in Victoria. This is really fun. I'm really glad you guys came over. They're from Vancouver, and you've got a, a whole crew of people with you. Who is with you? Like, what is this? You're like taking over. We have a too long to mention list of rock and roll luminaries from the Vancouver rock and roll and punk rock scene in our band. Going back to this guy, one of the first Vancouver, if not the first Vancouver punk rock band, Pointed Sticks, right? And just people that have been playing music their whole life and really living it, and uh, that's all we're gonna do. Well, you've got, what is it, 11 active members in your band? Yeah. 14, but we have some people are on the, you know. Yeah. Well, what do you guys all play? I mean, you're obviously not just your standard three-piece setup, so. Uh -huh. There's, what do you got going on? But it's like pretty standard. It's, it's guitar, bass, and drums and singers. But there just happens to be like seven guitars, two drums. Sometimes there's two basses. Right now we're down a bass player. But being in this band is like being in a Fellini film. It's not just crazy. It's like there will be a naked midget on a goat at some point, you know? So if you can't deal with that kind of stuff, then you... you know. It's not a show till a midget rides a goat. Speaking of gimmicks, what are these little guitars I've heard about? Well, like it was these... our first gimmick, you know, but they're a little <laughs> on the tired side now. But you know, you know people want to see the guitars. Bands, and now I'm in a band that plays little tiny guitars and like wears uniforms and shit. So it's just like, eh. <laughs> Cal makes them all. Cal's a, a luthier. He used to work at uh, Larave Guitars, and he li literally makes them from like found and salvaged pieces of wood. One guitar is laminated with the uh, curly African maple that came from a yacht. So tell me about your leading lady. Tell me about Mellow. Where does she fit in with you crazy motherfuckers? Well, she used to be in like Muscle Bitches, right? She was in like yeah, what? Yeah. I don't know how she made her way into the group really, because you know, we kind of were sort of satisfied with her. Was, was, she just suddenly appeared. I can't remember yeah. exactly. Mellow's just Mellow. Yeah. It's just sort of like what the rest of us, you know, like we're people, right? Yeah. It's like a bunch of banana. We're all a bunch of bananas. Like, we're fucking 14 bananas in a fucking leaky boat, man. I'm trying not to laugh my ass off is what's going This is why Jen doesn't smoke pot and then do interviews. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do not adhere to the laws of the CRTC. It looks like we're good to go. Sergeants come out to lay down the law. Come on to the stage. All right. Well, that was a Little Guitar Army. I'm Jen Warnock for Absolute Underground. This guy's getting kicked out. I'm going in. See you later. Stone bands, and it's time to watch Absolute Underground TV. Season speedings!
David Parker here for Absolute Underground's West Coast Report. I'm up here at Crankworks, Whistler's biggest mountain bike event of the year. Today, there's $25,000 up for grabs. We're gonna see who grabs it. Let's go on up the mountain. I'll show you guys what this is all about. Crankworks, guys. Hope you had as much fun watching that as I had shooting it. Pretty awesome. Big airs, big berms, some big crashes. Got a great big winner, new winner here. $25,000 in his pocket. Catch you guys later. Absolute Underground TV's West Coast Support, Brian Parker, signing out. Oh my God, they just ate my dog. How's my hair, fellow? Are we rolling? Okay. Good evening. Aloysius Love Shroud reporting for CKNW. Son of a bitch!
Who are we talking to again? My name's Chris from Less Than Jake. My favorite color is blue. Um, the history, of brief, brief history of the band. We've been in, uh, from Gainesville, Florida. We started in 1992. I'm here in British Columbia in Victoria. It's our first time here. It's 2012. I don't know where the years went. Um, I attribute the longevity of the band to the fact that, um, you know, we're still having a good time. You know, we still get up there and we have fun. Um, we're not just doing it for a paycheck. You know, we uh, started the band 20 years ago and never thought it was going to get out of a garage, it got out of the garage, it got into a van, never thought I was going to get from a van to other countries, and it did that, and um, at this point, you know, I, I have no idea where this is going to take us, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, I'm just here enjoying it, you know, like, I probably have more fun now than I've, I've ever had in, in the band. <laughs> Yeah, it's a love-hate relationship. It's like brothers, you know, fight like hell, talk shit behind each other's back, but you get on stage and you rock and have fun, and, you know, we still get along. Yeah, we got a new album coming out. It's called Greetings and Salutations. It's on Fat Records. It's going to be coming out um, in January. It has uh, ten songs that were kind of released. I mean, we self-released them, you know, uh, through our website. We would take them on the road and, and sell them, but uh, we never made them available to iTunes. They weren't you know, available digitally or anything, so... They're pretty underground releases, and we took those 10 songs, and we had two songs left over from those sessions, and we repackaged it into an album that we're going to be coming out with soon, and in the process, we're writing a new a new album as well. How does it, the new album compare to the last album? Um, people that like our band are going to like it, and people that don't like our band are going to be like, again? A lot of good fucking bands have come from Canada. Some of my favorite bands, the Doughboys from Montreal, Quebec. It's SNFU, Dayglow Abortions, Sun 41, Nickelback, Brian Adams, Loverboy, Triumphs, Crocus, Helix, Alanis Morissette, Celine Dion. True story, had a sprint date, Alanis Morissette in 1995 said she had full broccoli in the pits, didn't shame her nothing. Since you're celebrating 20 years as a band, what are some of your fondest or toughest memories? Fondest memories um, was playing for Bon Jovi in 2000. We opened up a full leg of their tour and uh, 15 to 20,000 seat basketball arenas, hockey arenas. It was pretty cool. Um, the fans hated us, which is even cooler. But touring yeah. now compared to when I was younger, um, a lot less beers, more sleep, more um, like, you know, uh, Ben Gay heating, you know. Uh, Cream for your back, uh, heating pads, ice for your head and feet, um, depends undergarments. They make depends in Canada. Okay. You don't have the wheel that you spin to play the albums anymore? No, they wouldn't let us bring the wheel over the border. So we had a bunch of heroin packed in there. No, I did, we did not. <laughs> <laughs> I love the minute that you cross the border. I, you can just. Things kind of look the same, the roads, the street signs, but you just talk to anybody, the people up here, it's just, you know you're not in the States anymore. And I mean that with the utmost respect, man. You guys got some good people up here, and it's just, you know, uh, soft-spoken, kind, courteous, and uh, the shows go off up here. Um, you know, the BC weed is good, the women are pretty, shows are great, punk rock rules up here. Um, you know, what else is there not to like? What is something that you've never told anyone else? Um, I have a really, really bad um, issue that I've had since fifth grade. I got uh, well, my left nut knocked out in a dodgeball accident. Never told anybody that until just now. Thanks, guys. Uh, what do you think of the uh, ska and punk community worldwide today? Is it still as popular? Or? Um, you know, I, I, was, I wouldn't say it's still as popular on a, anywhere near on a commercial level. Um, you know, it's kind of went back on underground, if you want to call it that. But it's still thriving. You know, there's places throughout Europe and England and, and uh, you know, Canada as a whole. Uh, punk rock up here is always had a stronghold. Um, you know, the three three cities that really come to mind are, are you know, uh, you know, 
British Columbia or this side of the, of the country, you know, Vancouver and, and uh, as far as the east, you know, Montreal and Toronto, Quebec City are just huge punk rock towns, so it's good. Hey, this is Chris from Lester Jake and you're watching Absolute Underground TV. Rock on. Uh, my name's Tony from Municipal Waste. What I'm infamous for? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Fucking being a smart ass, I guess. <laughs> uh, igloo wrecking thrash. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to describe my, our sound for igloo people? <laughs> what did you say? Take it fast and watch it slow. The crew's tensions are about to blow. A uh, fast, fun crossover metal Slayer worship DRI drunks. Okay. Uh, we've been around for 12 years. Um, we went from playing basements to houses to shitty clubs to like bigger rooms than outdoor festivals, and that's pretty much everything that's happened this week, so <laughs> we're still doing the same shit. Um, basically, we were just kind of bored. Uh, dicking around Richmond and uh, wanted to do something fun. There wasn't really any, anybody playing that kind of metal or crossover stuff. And uh, I don't know, there wasn't really a lot of like punk influenced metal going on where we lived. So uh, we just kind of, it was kind of like just our thing to do for, for fun, have a good time. And we still are having a good time. So yeah. Yeah, the first time, at least, especially Vancouver, was the first time we ever played. Uh, Vancouver was with Guar and. Uh, we always wanted to play. I mean, we were a band for about five years, five or six years before that tour even came about. And we were trying to get into Canada and we could never 
get on a legit tour or get across legally. So we tried sneaking across a we tried sneaking across to play Toronto a couple times and they wouldn't let us, so we had to cancel a bunch of shows. But finally, Guar, we, we were able to do it legit, and then we figured out how easy it was if you just like didn't try to be sneaky about it, <laughs> and if you, had, if you had clean clean records and shit. Let's get the stuff our face. He let us on the uh, new album, new municipal waste album is called The Fatal Feast. Uh, it came out in April, and it's our fifth record, which is fucking weird. I didn't think we'd do that many. It's a lot of songs. For we have a lot of short songs, so it's over the years. That's a lot of fucking music that we've written. And, uh, it's quality, man. It's quality. <laughs> space theme going on with this record. It's it's basically a space concept record, even though there's only two songs about space on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's usually the same shit. We have songs about drinking, um, you know, wrecking shit, social issues. I love saying social issues. So many, what'd you write that song about? Social issues. That's like my go to thing. That's what I write about social issues. Because I fucking care, man. Eventually, you know, being a thrash band, the song you have to write a space record. You know, somewhere down the line, you're gonna write a space record. So, we just figured we'd knock that out with our fifth one. <laughs> so, uh, we're we're gonna do the in the hood record next. Like, so we have we have the space record done. Now it's gonna the next one will be uh, municipal waste in the hood. The Canadian chronic is that what you guys call it? <laughs> humble humble county gold. Oh, uh, face squisher is really good. You guys tried that? Um, there's um, the, the metabolizer. That was another really weird one I tried out. You guys got some weird names for your weed here. We had one beer bong that Guar made us a long time ago. It, it probably had AIDS growing inside of it. It was really gross. I mean, it was. It smelled like a dead thing's armpit. <laughs> like, it was fucking nasty. We didn't clean it that much, you know? So you use it every night on stage, you know, just to pull somebody up, and we've had to have killed a couple people with that, you know, some sort of disease. It's, it's, it's usually a lot of crazy shit. I don't know. I hate it when people say they got boogie boards, because guess what? We don't got fucking boogie boards. People bring that shit. We don't do that, so I don't know. <laughs> people come and get rowdy and have a good time. They throw beer around. People get dancing around. They got the beers in their hands and the dancing. A lot of that shit. Come out. Do that. No hope left. You're going to be on heels. One last breath. Willie from Dayglows has a cookbook coming out, and uh, we just, me and the wizard, made up a recipe for it, and it's the wizard's five bean goulash. My mother knows how to work the internet, so I ain't telling you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, everyone in the band's in a million side projects. <laughs> uh, I just finished an album with Phil, our bass player. We got a new band called Iron Reagan, and I'm really fucking stoked on it. It's like 21 song LP, and it's under like 20 minutes long. <laughs> so it's like real fast metal punk shit, you know, the kind of stuff I like to sing. I also sing for a hardcore band in Florida called No Friends, which is more like uh, melodic hardcore, kind of like, kind of like dag nasty kind of shit. Phil's got Cannabis Corpse, Ryan, Ryan's got Vulture, Dave's got 800 other things going on. <laughs> we played, one show was uh, during the hurricane in 
in Boston where they shut the city down. Connecticut show we played while they were like evacuating. We still played. And Boston, the night it hit, we were there and, you know, we still played our fucking show. And fucking people came out. The shows were still like packed and raging. Like, it was one of the craziest experiences uh, playing music was just to be like, wow, the city shut down. There's a fucking hurricane that's gonna devastate, you know, the East Coast. And people are like, yeah, well, fuck it, you know? Like, I'm gonna go see Napalm Death in the Waste, you know? <laughs> like. Uh, thanks for letting us in your country. That was really cool of you. <laughs> Hopefully we can get in next time. Too. <laughs> uh, what's up? This is Tony from Municipal Waste. You're watching Absolute Underground TV. And shit.